It was towards the end of the war, 1944, when his entire community was sent to a ghetto in Hungary. A short while later, the Hungarian authorities rounded them up and sent them all to a place called Auschwitz. Now at the time, they had no idea what this place was. They'd never heard of it. They didn't know what it represented. Ellie, unfortunately, lost his younger sister and his mother. His father died just months before the Americans liberated this camp. What bothers him more than anything else, and he talks about this often, is the fact that they didn't know what Auschwitz represented. However, there were people in the community before they were deported that didn't know, didn't have this information. However, they didn't care enough to tell them this very, very important information that could have saved literally the entire community. He says that if they would have had this information, they all could have escaped. They went along because they felt that they're going to be back tomorrow. It was the indifference, the carelessness that bothers him today more than anything else. He says that after the war was over, he had this desire to return home. And he couldn't understand where this came from until it came to him. He said the night that he was deported and left to Auschwitz and his younger sister and his mother were the first to be separated from the rest of them. His eyes caught sight on the second floor of a window of this middle-aged man looking at them. And this was the eyes and the face of indifference. He had no expression. He was kind of just watching them being rounded up to be deported as if he was watching his TV set watching the news being unfolded. He said, I wanted to go back home to confront this individual and ask him why. Why didn't you care enough to say something, to help us, and perhaps to share some information that could have saved many, many lives? Well, tonight, we're going to hear the story of one individual that did care cared enough to save many, many souls, and the result of his caring was that 1,200 precious souls were saved. And the truth of the matter is, it's not just the 1,200 souls. You've got to consider the children of these individuals, the grandchildren, the great-grandchildren. So Mr. Schindler really saved thousands of individuals. And it is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce to you tonight an individual that understands the consequences of indifference, which is why he's told his story to dozens of communities throughout this great nation and audiences throughout the world, I believe. It is my honor, and please help me welcome Mr. Leon Layson. Good evening, everyone. You know, a few years ago, I could have just jumped right up here instead of going up these steps. But not today. <laughs> it's a little late in, in, in years now. Uh, thank you, Rabbi, for the introduction. And uh, leaving me up here to tell my story. Uh, I want you to know that I'm not a, I'm not a Holocaust scholar. I simply am one who experienced it. And so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about myself, which is a little bit awkward. Uh, you know, my mother, you know, raised me not to bother people with my own problems. But uh, <clears throat> in this case, I can't tell the story unless I talk about myself and my family. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my family, where we come from, how we ended up in Krakow, how we ended up in the ghetto, 
how we, how we ended up on Schindler's list and survived the war. 